Adam X Cast is a modular companion that transforms your Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus into a four input HDMI switcher. Together, they are Ninja Cast, a fully functional standalone switcher with an integrated high quality five inch touchscreen monitor with broadcast quality recording, multi view, and physical buttons that can be used anywhere and doesn't require a computer to function. Streaming is all done via PC. Use the included USB-C cable, as not all USB cables are USB 3 or support data transfer. Ensure you have the latest firmware installed on your Ninja 5. As with all professional equipment, we recommend building your setup around the way the cast is supposed to be used, resting it flat on a surface or mounting it on a stand via the quarter inch 20 thread on the bottom of the device. Attach your Ninja 5 to the Atom expansion connector on the Atom X cast. Next, connect the locking arm. Take care not to apply any force to any part. Attach DC power to Atom X cast. Power on Ninja cast. You have your four 1080p HDMI inputs, your 1080p program out, your 1080p cast out, USB-C, limited to 30p. You also have the HDMI out port on the Ninja 5 itself. We also have the physical buttons, input one button, the input two button, the input three button, and the input four button. Only four buttons, but the F buttons are function modifiers, and we'll run through how the F buttons change the mode or action in the buttons section. We recommend that in addition to connecting your HDMI inputs, you also connect a display to the HDMI out on your Ninja 5, and also connect a display to the program out on your Atom X cast. Having a setup like this will allow you to preview graphics and inputs on your preview monitor before being made live and while also having a dedicated program feed display. To ensure that Atom X cast is the source of your HDMI inputs and not the Ninja 5, open the source menu and select Atom X cast. We have the input menu. This menu displays your four HDMI inputs and allows you to select the primary input, which is represented by a green P. Live inputs will have a highlighted white HDMI symbol. Inputs with no live feed will have a grayed out HDMI symbol. Video mode displays that input's resolution and frame rate, and the project rate shows an input's conformed frame rate, which will conform to the primary input's frame rate. Graphics displays templates, presets, and respective allocated input. Audio pairs displays the number of audio pairs used. Next, we have the output menu. This menu allows you to customize your setup by choosing what to display on each of your outputs. The Ninja 5 output relates to the Ninja 5's HDMI out, which is available in three different modes. Preview allows you to preview graphics and presets before being made live. Multiview presents the same multi-view image that you see on your Ninja 5. Program outputs the program. The cast out is the HDMI out from the cast. The cast USB-C is the USB-C out from the cast. The cast and cast USB-C outputs are matched, so you can both stream and do baseband video over HDMI. FPS conversion toggle will conform the outputs to the highlighted resolution and frame rate. The overlays menu. In the overlays menu, you can upload images and graphics in PNG format or with support for alpha channel transparency and place them within target areas, which are represented by these anchor points. Graphic options include bug, masthead, lower thirds graphics, or a large graphic anchored in the center. To upload a graphic to a specific preset, the first thing we do is select a media slot. I've selected slot one. Then we select browse file. Now I already have a graphic in media slot one, so I'm going to overwrite it. My graphics are in this file here. I'm gonna select PNG number one. Now to confirm the selection, tap it again. To then upload a graphic to a specific area, ensure you have the media slot selected and then simply tap an area where you'd like the graphic to appear. If I wanted to have a second graphic on this same preset, preset one, what I would do is select media slot two or any other media slot for that matter and upload that to a specific area. To change the location of an existing graphic, simply tap the graphic and then tap any other location target to upload it there. It's important to note that graphics and overlays are not recorded onto the footage in order to maintain a clean program record. 
If you'd like to record graphics and picture in picture, we advise connecting a recorder to the program out of the Atom X cast. Next, we have the picture in picture menu. Use this switch to turn off and on your picture in picture. Use the numbered icons to select which input you'd like for your picture in picture. Use these square location targets to position your picture in picture. And you can also alter the size of your picture in picture. You can also alter the opacity of your picture in picture via the opacity slider. Next, we have the switcher menu. Choose to switch between your inputs with one touch or two touch in the switch with section. If two touch is selected, a green square surrounds the input you've selected and in preview mode will allow you to preview the image on an external monitor before actually being output live. A second tap on the same input will confirm the selection and cut to that input on the program feed. Also in the switcher menu, in the fade to color section, you can choose to fade in and out between black and white. I'm gonna keep mine selected as black. Next, we have the record menu, which is the same as the Ninja 5 record menu. It's your options for internal recording from a drive attached to your Ninja 5. Here you can select the codec your Ninja 5 will record to. Next, we have the timecode menu. You have the option to send timecode out over HDMI in the HDMI out timecode section. Next, we have the file menu. This menu allows you to specify the names of each file that you record. Next is the audio menu. Here, you can view your audio inputs. You can see and change between the analog mic line input on the Ninja. You can choose between the HDMI inputs embedded audio signal, the analog mic line input, or choose audio follow video. Next, we have the mic slash line menu. Choose your input audio level. You can choose between a line level and a mic line level. You can also adjust the gain of each left and right channel with the plus and minus icons. The main interface contains a multi-view of the four inputs, separated by each quadrant of the screen, with each input status represented by a number from one to four in the center of the screen. Each center number corresponds to its respective input number, and its color represents the input's feed status. Same goes for the large one to four buttons on the bottom of the Atom X cast. If red, that indicates the input has been selected for program out. If green, that indicates the input is selected for preview. On the bottom left hand side of the screen are the record and the playback menu. Now the playback menu is deactivated if the live switch is enabled. The live button will both enable and disable your USB and HDMI out. It's a kill switch, so it must be pressed to allow your program feed to be output to your streaming software or connected program display via the cast USB-C and HDMI outputs. On the bottom right of the screen are the fade in and fade out buttons. You also have the quad split view button. Tap the quad split view button to toggle between the multi view mode, which displays all four inputs at once, which is perfect for switching, to toggle between the single input mode. Now in single input mode, you display just one of your inputs in full screen, which is perfect for checking your exposure with the Atom OS exposure assist tools, your focus, as well as displaying your waveforms. On the top left of the screen, the project rate is displayed. This is the primary resolution and frame rate selected from a specific input. All secondary inputs will conform to the primary. The output will mirror the primary input unless FPS conversion for streaming is enabled. Monitor represents the output status from the Ninja 5. I'm gonna keep mine set to preview so I have a dedicated preview display. Audio displays the audio source. TC displays the time code. SSD displays available time for recording. Firstly, we'll go over the F1 button. Touch this button to activate the picture-in-picture -picture functionality. When picture-in-picture -picture is activated, to select what input you'd like as your picture-in-picture, -picture, use the input buttons one to four. When an input is selected for picture-in-picture, -picture, the respective button illuminates yellow. F2 button, the audio button. The one to four pad buttons in this mode act as an audio switcher. Once F2 has been selected, you can use the input selection pads to switch between the audio from the four HDMI inputs. No input button will be illuminated with color if you have your analog mic line input selected. Audio is still switchable via the input buttons. A mic icon, as you can see there, indicates the input audio source. 
Double tapping an input activates audio follow video, signified by the button being backlit blue. In this mode, as you switch your video tracks, the audio will come from whichever video track you've selected. And the blue microphone icon signifies the input audio source. So as I switch between my video tracks, you'll hear the audio source changing as well. The F3 button, the overlays button. In this mode, the one to four pad buttons act as a graphic switcher. Once F3 has been selected, pressing one of the four input pads will turn the selected pad green and apply the overlay to the preview output of the Ninja 5 HDMI out. This allows you to preview each of the graphical presets over the current input. Press and hold the green button to turn the button red and lock the graphical preset to that input. So when you output it, it'll be output with that input. Hold the red button again to unlock that preset to that input. The F4 button, the switcher button. Touch the F4 button to activate the one touch switcher. The F4 button illuminates red to indicate you're in one touch mode. Press F4 again to enter two touch mode. The amazing thing about NinjaCast is that you have the ability to work as a standalone switcher and also you can multitask by working with the touchscreen to be able to switch continuously and also make adjustments to inputs and settings via the touchscreen while you're outputting live. Adam XCast transforms your Ninja 5 into a four input HDMI switcher while retaining the core features that made Ninja 5 so exciting in the first place. If you require more support, please visit adamos.com support. Until next time, go get creative.